Which word of the day? Today's word is scrying, verb. Now, Charmed fans will be familiar with the term scrying, but it actually means something different than what was portrayed on the show. Many witches use scrying in their practice to uncover truths about themselves and the world around them. The word scrying means to reveal or to perceive. To be a scryer, you are crossing over to another consciousness, a mystical plane, and leaving behind your conscious mind. Scrying is the art of gazing into a dark mirror, water, or crystal, going beyond the physical eyes and letting the inner psychic eye open, allowing us to receive visions and information. So no pendulum crystal over a map. That's more commonly known as dowsing. Um, scrying is actually something quite different. Um, another term for scrying is catoptromancy. That's a mouthful, but yeah. Um, so yeah, mirrors and water and stuff like that. Um, and for the picture I'm going to put on the Instagram, it's going to be of Ida Clawthorne from the Owl House looking into a book with a magic mirror on it. I thought it was so fitting for this podcast. You haven't even read that? Wait, what are you doing with the book? So he has the confidence to finish the story. Hear now the words of the witches. This is Kevin and welcome to Words of the Witches, the Charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser known published material in the Charmed universe and decide how it fits into the grand narrative of the TV series. Hello, spell worders. Blessed be. Happy anniversary to Charmed. Wow. October 7th, 1998. And we are releasing this October 7th, 2021. That's 23 years. Amazing. We've been, it's been going strong. The love has been going strong. The fandom has been, been growing. Um, it's just great. I remember the first time I watched the series, October 7th, 1998. It was a Wednesday. I was a little 10 year old and I, I saw that commercial for the trailer. It says coming next. And and that trailer had that voice and had that perfect sense of eeriness and intrigue. And I watched it and then I found the mystery, the magic, the family, all of that. It was an amazing show from day one and I was hooked and I, you know, I never turned back. So Happy anniversary, Charmed. Happy anniversary, Spell Worders, and all the Charmed fans out there. I am so happy we get to celebrate together. Now, before we get started with the episode, I want to make some announcements. Uh, I did do a poll about uh, the podcast support, and I have decided to stay free. Um, and so there's going to be no fee for, for bonus episodes, at least not right now. If that changes, I will definitely make you guys aware. But right now, I'm deciding to stay free because, you know, I wanted to create a sense of community, a place to bond over a shared passion and to fill that creative spark in me that I felt I had lost. Uh, so getting to talk about Charmed with all of you and getting to dive into the show has given me so much joy and really, that's what it comes down to. However, uh, you know, money is always helpful. So if you are someone who likes the idea of merch or future giveaways, um, the option to support the pod is still going to be there. <laughs> if you go to anchor.fm slash words of the witches slash support, you can donate either 99 cents, 4.99, or 9.99. And um, you, I do have perks in mind for those who do support um, because of some of the plans I have. So you'll definitely get personally thanked on the show and the description box on podcast episodes. You'll automatically get sent brand new pod merchandise that I hope to make. Um, you'll get extra entries in a future giveaway and because right now I am currently compiling a giveaway package um, which will include some of my rare charmed items and some pod merch that I hope to have by then uh, when we hit our one year anniversary in February next year. So um, I'm, I am planning a giveaway. So if you do decide to support, you'll get extra entries into that giveaway providing you follow the other rules that will be in place. Other exciting news, I did create a Twitter account for the page. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Twitter, but I figure I want to be available on all the platforms to be around for everybody to find and to enjoy the things that I'm going to be posting. So I am on there. The handle for Twitter is Words of Witches. All right, we are Words of the Witches, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and then Words of Witches on Twitter. Hooray! But hey, uh, we've got some Ultimate Power Challenge results. There's one more battle on the horizon, one unlike you've ever faced before. Ultimate Power Challenge. Last episode, I challenged you guys to find how many times the backyard was seen in the series. Now, we did give you a freebie on that one, um, but I will go over them. There's four of them in order of appearance. The first one was in season two, episode 14, Pardon My Past, when we had Pearl Russell 
Phoebe's past life throw fire at some bottles in the backyard with Anton. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, the second one was in season three, episode two, Magic Hour, when we had Brooke and her little owl boyfriend and Prue and Piper were supporting her in the backyard there. That was filmed at the actual house, which is cool to note. Um, then we had season four, episode seven, Brain Drain. This was the one we mentioned in the episode where Piper was in her source uh, mental hospital and then we had season five, episode 15, The Day the Magic Died, uh, the one where Wyatt was born. They're sitting in the backyard on their little lawn chairs, looking at the stars, and talking about Sabbaths. Yeah! And our special spell worder actually comes right from the Twitter. They were uh, very supportive from the first day. So this person is named Ian, and their screen name is Power of 323 on Twitter. Um, so I asked them the questions. So how did you discover Words of the Witches? I found Words of the Witches on Google Podcasts when just searching for Charmed Podcasts because there are just not enough of them. Okay, and then how did you discover Charmed? I became a Charmed fan as a child. I was flipping through the channels one night and saw the last few minutes of Ms. Hellfire where Prue is attacking her sisters. I don't think I saw another episode till I found it again during season three and became hooked. Never missed another episode and it has been my favorite show since then. I asked what your favorite episode is. Oh, how dare you? There are definitely (laughs) episodes I acknowledge as being better than others. However, my favorites are generally ones I rewatch most often, and those tend to be the more lighthearted episodes. My favorite era is season four through eight, and think my favorite season is season five. Not sure I can narrow it down from there. Just too many amazing episodes to pick from. I feel you there. I really do. (laughs) I asked them what your favorite moment from the series is. (laughs) Another one. Is anyone able to answer this? (laughs) Because it is very difficult. Um, I have to say, the sister scenes, just hanging out together, supporting one another, are my favorites. Especially if they are funny and cute scenes. Holding hands, helping each other get ready for dates, supporting and advising each other, and telling someone they are a witch. That is very nice. Very nice to note. Cute. Thank you. Uh, Then I asked, uh, do you know any of the books? Do you have a favorite book? Have you read the books? Uh, And they say... I have read the majority of the books and own a lot of them as well. Been reading them for years and they are always a joy to read again. My favorite is Something Wicked This Way Comes. I love when they travel somewhere in the books and this was pretty different with going to a witch convention. The characters were really in point, which they aren't always, and the book was a well-told mystery with a surprising twist. I also love the ones written by Paul Ruditus. He really gets the charmed world and I am so glad he went on to write season 9. Oh, well... Now I feel bad for not liking Something Wicked This Way Comes as much, but maybe I was too harsh on it. You're right, there are some really nice things to enjoy in that one. Uh, The desert, the witches, uh, the murders, there was a a good core in there. So, um, And I said, if you had a power, what would it be? If I had a power, I would want telekinesis, because as a germaphobe, I would never have to touch anything ever again. (laughs) Beautiful. That's a perfect answer. Thank you. I love that. Uh, And then I asked, is there anything you want to ask me? And they said, if you could have written an episode placed in any season of Charmed, where would you place it and what would it be about? Oh, okay. Uh, (laughs) Oh, you know what? I know. Back in the day when I was really had lots of time on my hands, I actually wrote a Charmed fan fiction or started to write a Charmed fan fiction (laughs) about what would have happened if the alternate reality that Cole created in Centennial Charmed, if Piper was that, you know, badass femme fatale, um, and Phoebe was in that loveless marriage with Cole and sleeping with the bodyguards. And, you know, I wrote, started to write how that would have happened if Paige was actually killed. What the grief over Prue would have led these girls to become and uh, things would happen. And we would see these alternate timelines kind of merging together um, and seeing an alternate Prue, seeing an alternate Paige and kind of coming into there so it would have taken place between season three and five now we will start our episode for a mirror image in the show we've seen mirrors a few times we had the one that Prue used to deflect Jabna's energy beams and I've got you under my skin we've had Kali from the fourth sister with Aviva and we've had uh the parallel dimension mirrors too in the it's a bad 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 world part one and two so just a few instances we'll see what happens in this book all right, so this is episode 19, book 19, Mirror Image, and joining me this week is the awesome, beautiful graphic artist, wonderful friend, Gerardo Mosqueda. Did I say that okay? Hi, uh, uh, well, it's Gerardo Mosqueda. 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 Gerardo yeah. Mosqueda. Okay, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I knew I, I I was pretty confident with the first name because I looked up how to say it. <laughs> well, it's difficult when 
Well, I, I, uh, for example, when I met people on the United States, I don't know why they can say my name as well. I'm, maybe because of the R. It's uh, it's the G, I think, it's because it's the G. we we say things. We we think it's like Gerardo, like okay. Ger, Gerard is how we would say it here. So it's so totally it's like funny. yeah. When I <laughs> you're from Mexico, <laughs> what's it like living in Rose McGowan's neighborhood? Well, it's, it's really exciting because um, I met Rose last year. I didn't know that she was going to make a conference here in Mexico. And then I was, I don't know, uh, checking my, my social media and I saw this uh, post that she make. I don't know, I think it was on Facebook. And, and I was like, oh, okay, a conference. Oh, Mexico. And I was like, uh, she, she go to Mexico City. I'm not from Mexico City. I'm from... Uh, where I live is Irapuato, Guanajuato, I'm from, uh, that's where I live. And Mexico City is from, it's like four hours, I think, uh, from here to, to where she made the, the conference and say, well, the conference is going to be uh, free. It's not like a um, convention or something. And it's here in, in, in Mexico, so I have to go. And it was so fast because I contacted a friend that lives there and he also loves, well, he, he was charmed in some point of his life and, and, and he knew the, the, the characters and the actresses and said, hey, Bruno Gowen is going to be in, in Mexico. I have uh, two uh, tickets to go. Want to go with me? And he said, yeah, let's go. Um, I, I have to admit, it was... Uh, Obviously, it was very exciting to watch Rose McGowan next to me. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, there's Rose McGowan like two meters from me. And I was so scared. She went to the bar and I don't know, she asked for a drink or something. And she saw me and I saw her and I was like, hey, Rose. She come to me and she hugged to me and, and it was like Rose McGowan talk to me and, and, and she's so sweet she's like a, a very nice woman and uh, I don't know so much people think that she's very tough but I think that he's the way she is and personally I have a really really great experience when I asked for her if he could uh, sign for me one of my posters and I say I sometimes when I post my, my work I try to tag you so you can uh, see it and you and she told me you make this how, how did you make this oh well i put all all these pictures of the girls and i then um i put it right, together right. in photoshop and she said oh yes i've seen some of your work it's it's great and she I, recognized I you, some yeah, of my work. Yeah. yeah you post things on the yeah and it was it was so so cool to to meet her and that she recognized my work and it was uh, a very neat great neat. experience yeah yeah when i met her she was super adorable to me too very sweet so short yeah <laughs> um so for people who don't know you are very um well known with your your charmed creations on the internet on the, yeah. online you want to talk about your 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 art page but then you also have the war and witches antiques page Yes, well, um, I, I have to say, I, I, I feel that I've always been very, well, first of all, I, I forgot to say it before we start, to all your charm followers, I'm sorry if my English is not the best, but as you can hear, I'm from Mexico and English is not my native language, so I'm trying to do in my, my best. <laughs> I like what I'm doing right now, I, it's, well, compared with what I was doing, I don't know, 10 years ago or five years ago, I think that my editing skills have been grown. But I think there is something that you have to keep practicing and practicing. And best way to challenge you is challenging you by yourself. So uh, it's, it's, it's really, uh, how can I say it, um, relaxing for me, making this uh, charm edit posters. Um, <laughs> It's 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 fun. It's it's one of my favorite hobbies that I have. I want to let people know too. You were very pivotal in creating the the artwork and the templates that I use for this podcast. You tell me that you're going to start this project, and you already sent me a a, a logo and a few pictures that you already wanted to use. 
And I'm, I don't know, I'm like very visual, you know, and I, when I saw these, these pictures that you sent to me, I said, that's a really cool idea. And I, my mind started to make some magic. I don't know how, how I can call it. And I said, well, I like this, but we can do something even more charming. And that's why I, I tried to make this, yeah. uh, I don't know logo. Um, like it's like the essence of the of the of the podcast. I mean, visually, it's something that people. I, when I make something, I want to people like say, "Oh, this is this is uh, fun." Right. It is beautiful. So I thank you for that. How did you discover Charmed? You know, where does where does the love come from? When I was a child, I have no brothers or sisters. They are just my mom, my father, and and, and I. I grew up, my entire childhood, I spent most of the time with my grams, my my father's mother. And I remember that I spent all, after school, I spent all my day uh, with, with her at, at his house. And I remember that one of my aunts and my cousins used to watch, used to watch, watch the show. Um, I... I didn't like the show at first. I have to be honest. I didn't like it. The only thing that I wanted to see in that time was The Simpsons. So, but funny because I <laughs> love Disney. Uh, my very first memories as a child is watch The Little Mermaid, Snow White, Peter Pan, Hercules. And one of my aunts told me, you know, there's this show where, where there's three witches and there's an episode where they become a princesses and, and mermaids. And I said, wait, there's, there's a show where three witches become mermaids and all these kinds of things that I used to relate with, with, with Disney. And said, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's fun. It's the show that sometimes I watch uh, with your cousin. And I was like, oh, um... I'm gonna give it a try, and I used to watch the first episode that I remember to see was the one where they become superheroes. I think which is in tights, okay? Yeah, which is in tights. One of my aunts started to tell me the the, the storyline of the show, and I was like, "Oh, well, it sounds interesting," and that's how I become to to watch the show. But uh, now that I I, I remember, I feel <laughs> like the show and my aunt stop watching it and my my cousin too and i used and i ended up with this room full of things on the show but yeah, yeah it was it was funny and then I, I remember that i don't know it was my cousin but they told me that there was another sister and i was like oh, okay so there's four sisters i hope it was season five the one that the one that I was watching it and say, oh, I hope the other sister appear in one of the next episodes because I didn't know the mythology right. of the story. I, and then I start to watch them online uh, pictures of the sisters that would prove, and I was like, oh, she's Prue. I could watch an episode with Prue until I got my very first season on DVD. I mean, it's so crazy to see or hear everyone's story, and that's why I always love asking that question because they all come from a different place. Um, and it's so cool that you you came right in like season five and then had to go back. Uh, so pretty neat, pretty cool stuff. And now you're like a massive influence in the charm community. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, so now we'll get on with the book. <laughs> uh, Mirror image, and you have the um, Spanish version. The Spanish version. This is the version from Spain. Here in Mexico, they didn't make any books. In fact, the show in Spain is Embrujadas, that it will translate like Embrujadas. And, and, and embrujadas. and here in Mexico, it's uh, Hechiceras, Sorcerers. What's, what's the title on your cover, say? La Imagen del Espejo. Oh, I love that. Say, say it again. La Imagen La Imagen <laughs> <can't> <laughs> It's it's the trans the translation of the original title. You, you, you say it again though. It sounds sexy when you say it. <laughs> La imagen del espejo. Oh, I love that. I can't say that. But I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine is mirror image. <laughs> mirror image. And yeah, the cover. Our cover is pretty much the same. 
Yeah, and well, funny because my book has a picture of Constance and Birch in the inside. And it does. Show me. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that sounds crazy. Wow. Is. Oh my god, let me screen capture that. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Like a little puzzle piece with Constance's picture. And that was that's a capture from the Women of Charmed documentary. Yes, because it has a yes. poster from the first season. You can see it. Yes. Yeah, it's very weird to see pictures of, of her. That is so strange because yeah, yeah, in any Charmed materials and any Charmed uh, merchandise, we never see her picture. We always see her name, but we never see her picture anywhere. So that's yeah, pretty it's, cool. And it's weird because there is no much pictures of her online. I mean, there's just a picture that has uh, the, the Woman of Charm documentary yeah. and a few pictures of her in one of the DVDs bonus features from season 8. But those are all footage. There is no actual pictures of her. And yeah. it's really weird because she's the woman that made Creator. the show. But that's yeah. Weird. Yeah, pretty fascinating. That's oh, I love these little tidbits. Thank you. Um, but yeah, the cover <laughs> it's um, season season four promo pictures, um, and then we have like this hand mirror in the background, and it does uh, look a lot like the Tibetan mirror from I've Got You Under My Skin. Yeah, it looks. Uh, that was um, what I was Javna. thinking. Yeah, that was what I was thinking when I was reading the book. I said, "Oh, I think that is." It's not the same mirror, but it has the same right. style with the same same aesthetic, the, same kind of yeah. yeah culture. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then inside, it has like a little ghostly, foggy figure in it, like a you know, ooh. And, then, very... and we'll learn about that figure. And then even behind him, there's you can see the Golden Gate Bridge even yeah. in the background behind there. So lots of really cool things to look at here. Um, and it has the tagline. Will skeletons in the closet tear the sisters apart? Right. It has a spell here. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's the right spell from the book or is something that the book editors just put it over there. Yes. Every one of these books has a little spell section in the back mm -hmm. of the book before the summary. Most of the time they don't appear in the book at all. No. Um, it's just it's just kind of there to market it. It's like a little poem. All right. It says okay. Mirror, mirror on the wall, poised a sheet to take the fall. As mist and fog I travel through, a demon's will this binding shall endure. That's yeah, it's the, it's the design of spell <laughs> that it has in mind. Yeah, it starts off really good and rhyming, and then it loses the rhyme and just kind of trails off. But okay. Uh, Phoebe Hallowell is stunned when her latest vision involves her younger half-sister Paige. The vision reveals to her that Paige is actually an imposter who will infiltrate the power of three and break it apart. However, Piper is dismissive when she learns of Phoebe's concerns, so much that Cole and Leo end up taking sides as well. Before long, all involved are on edge. Paige senses that her sisters are acting strangely around her, so when she meets Timothy McBride, an attractive young stranger who purports to be a witch, she decides not to tell them. She wants to have something of her own, separate from her charmed duties. Secrets are estranging the sisters from one another, and the timing isn't good. Women are turning up all over the city, dead by supernatural causes. The perpetrator may be connected to the sister's past, but if they can't work together, they might not be able to stop him. Um, and this book was written by Jeff Marriott and published July 1st, 2003 and reprinted September 1st, 2003. Uh, and they say it takes place between season four, episode eight, Black is Coal, and episode 10, A Page from the Past. So we're actually going back because a lot of our books before this have been after that and more mid-season four. And now we're going a little bit ahead of that now so we're kind of backtracking so the prologue of the book it starts with this girl named julia tilton and she's running late to work there's a thick san francisco fog i think of the episode charmed when you know the pirates are coming and the fog comes in that's what i was reminded of that's the imagery i was getting um and as she ran she could hear someone else behind her she intentionally changed the pace of her breath and then stopped short on her path trying to like catch whoever's following her trying to catch them off guard and she heard the delay. She heard, like, the walking behind her, and she hears them stop. And then she looks around, and there's nothing there. Um, so then she continued on, and then she felt what was described as, like, a wet spider web on her cheek and then her neck. So she's feeling this really creepy, like, wet, tingly thing creeping me out. Um, and then shortly after, she hears a male voice, and it says, So pretty. I'm like, oh, <laughs> chills. Um, so then she screams and she swings her purse. She's like, it's this invisible presence. She's like, I don't know who's there, but whatever, get away from me. And then she was terrified and then she stopped in silence. And eventually she just kind of gave up. 
by the time the knife came for her, her mind had already left her. So she was killed in this fog. Very scary scene. I, 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 when I was reading that, I I used to think if if we were watching an episode on the TV, I think after the attack will be the opening credits. I don't know why I felt that. Oh no, that's totally valid. That's what would happen. I, I have I have to say when I start to read this book, um, it's yeah. like I don't know complicated in in somehow because I'm like you know very visual and I have to see things, but when I was reading through the through these chapters, I really feel that I was watching an episode. It's it's, it's writing with the very style of as he was watching an episode, and that's why I, I I like it a lot. I I never get boring or, or something. Oh yeah, they're very interesting, and that's why what, what I like to be honest with you. This is the first book that I that I read of the show. But I like it. I, I, I like that the structure of, of these books and if the other books has the same structure of these, it will be very fun to, to read them. Exactly. And that's part of why I'm doing this podcast because it is allowing people to read the books and bringing them to the, the light. Because I think I feel like the books are kind of looked down on a lot of the times. They see the show it's like, oh, the books don't matter. They're not canon. They don't matter. But a lot of them are very interesting and very good. And, you know, it gives you more charm stories. It's like you get all these extra stories that are, you know, we never got. And it's fun. And I do hear everybody who I have on this podcast as a guest, they read the book and they really enjoyed their time reading the book. So I'm glad I yeah. kind of sparked that in people. I'm glad that you're one of them too. Well, I I liked it. Well, here reading the, the the part that you put me in chapter one, it's uh nice to see that still the the, the books are stick to the new storyline of of page of this new life with, with with sisters, and I that's what I also like the, yeah. the well in in chapter one it still has this theme that page has this new life with her sisters and. The fact that she wants to meet a, a guy that understands the fact that she's a witch and she can right. um, share the secret with anybody else. Then a pop followed over Hollywood Manor and it found a way inside through a crack. Fog moved to each sisters one by one in their step and sprinkled them with dust. Phoebe fell into a deep dream sequence where she heard the cries of a tortured children. Go to the attic and blood period of the drawers of the chests and dressers. Phoebe awoke and told Cole she needs to get to this upstairs now. Um, this part when she has this dream where she thinks that Paige is a threat somehow. This is Agnes's letter. Okay. It says, a sister shall die and a new one will take her place. But the new witch is no ally. Mark me well. A traitor she is. And once entrusted by the family, this devil shall endanger the power of three. Let not this come to pass, lest ye be torn asunder from within the bosom of thine own family. (laughs) So, yeah. So that's when we, Phoebe is like, oh my gosh, Paige must be a traitor. (laughs) We never met some of the other and sisters, even that, even in the in the in some uh, scenes, we saw some of the Hollywood witches over there, but that's it. We never got the chance to meet. In this case, Agnes or some, some someone else. But it's it's uh, it's it's funny because if uh, if if we are in, in the reality of the show, that would mean that the ancestors will know that Prue will die at some point. It's crazy. It is crazy because this is even before the power of three even exists. This is just a concept to them, the power of three. It's like, oh, they'll get the power of three. I said they'll die. I know the future. It's like, okay, well, (laughs) they know everything apparently. (laughs) Uh, Chapter two. So Piper is still upset at the notion that Paige was a spy. She's like, Phoebe is, she's like, Phoebe is so out of it. Like, why would Paige be a spy? Why'd she be have to get us? And then Phoebe and Paige join Piper in the kitchen for breakfast and Paige can sense the tension in the air about what's going on she's like what's wrong why is nobody talking she's like this is she's like just tell me what's going on and piper and phoebe don't fess up to just stay quiet and they just like brush it off and she's like okay whatever i'm leaving you guys you guys work it out yourself this is i'm not here for this <laughs> and then piper and leo watch the news and they learn of julia's murder the lady from the beginning 
uh, and she was one of two murders in recent nights. Um, and then they also learned that on the news that a hundred year old human skeletons, all these skeletons were found in the basement of an apartment building. So Pepper goes ew, and Leo gets the feeling that this is a supernatural problem. He's like, I don't know. I feel like that's something that we need to investigate. Um, and then Phoebe searches the Book of Shadows, Shadows for Agnes info. She's like, I need to see what else I can find, what this chick was all about. And when she wasn't having any luck, she wrote, did her own spell to find something to lead her to Agnes. Um, and it turned to an entry written by Philippa Halliwell. Philippa Halliwell, yeah. Yeah, another ancestor. And Philippa Halliwell's journal entry says, Agnes came to the house for the first time since the day she turned against us. We were we were polite, as she remains family, but no more than polite. She has brought disgrace upon the Hallowell family, and there are many among us who are not disposed to forgive her, nor will become so. Agnes, as the saying goes, has made her own bed. Whether she enjoys lying in it is not a concern for the rest of us. Um, so then Phoebe tries to make sense of it all. She's like, oh, so Agnes is warning me, but this lady says that Agnes can't be trusted. What do I believe? What's going on? Um, so then it comes to Paige at work and Mr. Cowan was especially snippy today, mm-hmm. uh, kind of rude to her, but Paige deals with it because she does believe in his drive to help people and believes in his work. So he's just having a bad day. Um, but Paige was still annoyed that Piper and Phoebe wouldn't talk to her about whatever was bothering them that morning. So that it, it feels like when Prue and Phoebe fight together and Phoebe and Piper has to be the, the mediator. And now Piper has to be the mediator between Phoebe and 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 and, Pitch. Yeah. and, and that's really fun to to do. And and then the storyline still still um showing us that they are still sisters and they have to sometimes to put one of the sisters in one corner and, and right. another one in, in in the other. Right, and that's that's that is consistent. And then Phoebe talks with Cole and thinks that she that she should tell Piper that Agnes was disliked by his family, and they talk to Piper and Leo. And Piper thinks that if Agnes had a falling out with the family, we pro she probably should take her warning with a grain of salt. Phoebe is still determined to consider the idea that Paige could be untrust, un, untrustworthy because she was late uh, to that letter for a reason. Mm, uh, while I was reading this, I was thinking uh, if, if that would be the, the truth that Paige was, was an imposter, I was thinking, what if the source actually kill, kills Paige and she becomes, she turns in into Paige's form to yeah. try to infiltrate the the, the charmers, and in, it that makes sense because it could be if, if we uh, see this the storyline uh, arc, we can. I think that this book can be uh, in the time period when. Uh, Piper is kidnapped by the source, and, and I think that yeah. it, it, it has a um, logic somehow. Right. Yeah, that's true. It could lead directly into um, Centennial Charms too, where Paige was killed, and then they end up turning yeah. into those those versions of themselves. Interesting. <gasps> uh, Leon called to find their perspective, their their respective sisters, and getting to head argument. Yes. So this is where Leon Cole. They they are defending Piper and Phoebe, um, and they they get in a little bit of a fight, like real, like they're yelling at each other, like calling each other out. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> who would you side with? Do you think in this case? Mm, I, I think in, in in this uh, part of the of the book, I'm um, with with the side of Piper because while I was reading this, I, I was say like, this is well, thinking in in, in Phoebe's head doesn't have any sense that. She was the one who tries to embrace Paige, and she was the one that now she thinks she's an imposter. And she was like, it was strange to see Phoebe wanting to and somehow turns uh, against um, Paige somehow. You got it exactly, because I think Phoebe being completely dismissive and cold towards Paige based on just one ancient letter is ridiculous. Like, she's not even talking to Paige. She's just, like, completely cuts her off and not telling her a thing. It's like, and then not to explain anything to Paige is awful to her because here is Paige thinks you love her and that you want to be sisters, and then you're not even giving her the chance to explain herself or have a chance to, you know, feel anything. Because I've had instances where people stop talking to me altogether, and they lose their warmth and excitement to talking to me, and they don't tell me why, and I just get feeling like 
you know, I done something wrong or like, what did I do? You know, it's, it's a horrible feeling. So. Yeah. And, and when that happens, uh, you don't know even why is going, going on. I mean, uh, while I was reading this, um, I, I, I was thinking, okay, but feeling in the show was always very, uh, I, I don't know what, how can I say in, in, in English, easy to manipulate. I don't know. I mean, what with the Coley storyline, I mean, if he turns evil, she goes uh, uh, right next to him. And, and I think she's uh, very accurate to the personality of the of the characters because I think she's yeah, very she, easy to manipulate. She's easily swayed. Somehow. Wait for, like, crazy, like, her feelings, like, really kind of lead her astray sometimes. Because she's very, a, a very feelings person, but uh, she sometimes trusts them way too much. <laughs> yeah. All right, so then uh, continue with uh, Piper and Leo orbing out, I guess. Okay, then they go to, uh, I guess that they, they went to uh, a Daryl's when they were investigating the, yeah. the murders. And then they, well, at, at first they aren't very sure that the, all these cases of, the, of these women are related with something uh, supernatural or is just some crazy guy over there killing uh, strangers and what i like of this uh, in this part is that we see that daryl isn't alone in 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 the case there are other inspectors with him and it was um interesting to to read because after andy's death we never saw that daryl has a partner or something until maybe season i don't know six where inspector sheridan appears but it's it's also nice that Daryl has a a, a storyline more uh, in their own environment, not only with the sisters, and that's that's very interesting to to know. Yes, I do agree. I think it's nice that they do feature Daryl um, pretty prominently in this book. Yeah, and and then they discover all the skeletons in the uh, building. And that's where Leo has this feeling that this doesn't have to be with a natural causes, but supernatural uh, causes. And they, they figured out th that these murders are related somehow with uh, a, a case that happened uh, years ago, 100 of years ago. And that's how the storyline begins to to involve to, to the story that, that, that we know. Yeah, so they find they go to the basement of the apartment buildings. They see the skeletons, and Leo gets the bad feeling. Daryl tells them that Julia was found soaking wet. Back to the manor, uh, Leo wonders if the 100-year-old murders are the ones currently happen could be connected. And then Piper takes the newspaper with Julia's picture and scry over the map. The crystal look it up into something, but keep it watching location all over the map. And they say either he's everywhere or he's super fast and then we have this reference to Speedy Gonzalez that it's uh raising on the Mexican culture and that was very what very funny to to read yeah when I read that I'm like this is funny that you know you're coming on and they mentioned Speedy Gonzalez um <laughs> so is he like is he considered like a stereotype or is he like more of a hero in Mexico mm, no I mean um, I have to say no now in these days everyone gets offended with uh, everything. I mean, I respect right. all of the opinions, but no, here in Mexico, we also like that Speedy Gonzalez is part of the of, of this brand that it's the Looney Tunes and, and other people can somehow know our culture. I mean, the people has doesn't wear these big hats that he wears anymore, but it's part of right. all, of all culture and, and, and it's fun. I mean, I read a little bit about Speedy Gonzalez because I used to have a video game a Super Nintendo video game that that starred him. I used to have so much fun playing that video game. Um, but I read that, you know, Looney Tunes people like ended up stopping all of his cartoons for a long time because they thought it was problematic. Um, but then people from the culture were like, no, we love him. You know, he it's really nice that we have some representation. And, you know, he, he's, he's a hero to a lot of people. You know, he gets away. He's smart, you know. So they really kind of identified with that. I, I respect others' opinions, but, well, in my own perspective, it's it's fun to to see the representation of, of... It's not a stereotype as well, but 
it's he's, he's a cartoon. He's a cartoon. It's cartoon. I mean, <laughs> like it's, no, there, there is no reason to get offense. I mean, it's it's a cartoon. Yeah. And so their their purpose is to have fun, and I don't know why people get offended. But I mean, I respect yeah. everyone's opinion. And yeah. Um, All right, chapter four. Yes, Paige is at Union Square. She's on her lunch break from work, so she's kind of going on a shopping spree. She's going to Macy's, and she doesn't buy anything, and then she goes to get some lunch. Um, afterwards, she goes and waits for a cable car. And this was weird to me. I'm like, why is she taking public transportation when she has a perfectly good car? <laughs> no, I, I, I know. When I was reading these, I was thinking, I, I never see one of the girls taking public transport. Phoebe would take public transportation because Phoebe doesn't have a car at this point, but Paige always had a car since the beginning yeah. of the time, since she was introduced. So, ah, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> uh, she's waiting for a cable car. And as she's waiting, she notices a small boy. She's like, he's holding his mom's hand, but he has a ball. And the ball bounces away. So she's like, oh, God, he's going to run into after the ball and get hit by a car or something. And so she discreetly orbs the ball back orbs into the, the boy's ball. hand. She's like, here you go. Yeah, here you go, boy. Yeah, don't, don't I, so far. I, I don't know. I, I imagine that it, it was like, I don't know if you remember the, the movie uh, The Witches with Angelica Houston. When uh, she yeah, has yeah. the baby and she pulls away into the, I don't know, the, and it reminds me that, that, that the scene where, what I was thinking that yeah. baby was there and she was orbing the, the, the ball. And, and it was uh, nice to see that because um, we never got the chance to see these kind of little things to, that they make to, to help the innocent. I mean, this is not, yeah. I was thinking, this is not a personal gain. I mean, at, at the end of the day, she was having a, a life of a, of a children. Right, right. You know, and it's something that was just like, I want to done. It wasn't like this big epic, like innocent they had to protect for a long time and fight the demon. It's just like, just a little thing, a little thing to help. And she was like, I remember she was like chastising them. She's like, look to the mom. She's like, how could this mother be clueless? She didn't even know her <laughs> son was like away from her. She's like, what a stupid mom. But <laughs> she, she should go to reporting at social services <laughs> where she was working. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. And, and then after but, the, the saving the, the kid from, from the imminent accident, she met uh, Timothy. Yeah. So this handsome guy comes up to Paige and he's like, I saw what you did. That's great what you did. And she's like, oh, excuse me, what? Like, what do you mean what I did? You didn't see anything. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I saw you. He's like, don't worry, I'm a witch too. Um, which, that concept kind of really intrigued me. I'm like, oh, nobody ever comes up to them and tells them they're witches like that. Not unless they're crazy. Like, this guy seems pretty down to earth and pretty chill. And like, okay, this might be someone cool to be friends with. Yes, <laughs> and, and besides, it, it was uh, interesting to to read this part because I, I thought of him as a very confident man. I mean, she already know that magic exists and it, it feels like a, a very uh, a confident man next to Paige because in, in this period of, of, of the storyline of the, of the, of the show, she still, she, she's still um, very, I don't know if the word is insecure or scary about this new uh, way of life. And it's also a way to develop the, the, the personality that most of the girls have in the very early seasons of the show about meeting a guy that has accepted the, the, the fact that they were witches. And Timothy ends up asking Paige to coffee. Um, she she kind of like plays dumb, but she reluctantly agrees. Um, and then embarrassed, Timothy admits he's like, oh, you know what? I forgot my wallet. Oh, I'm like, oh, all right. What kind of person asked me to coffee? Yeah. Wallet, but sure. that, that, that wasn't very, um, uh, that's just convenient for him. <laughs> yeah. So Paige is like, fine, I got you covered this time. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and she's like, he's like, yeah, like, I, I like your powers. I have powers too. And he's like, I'm going to show you my power to levitate coffee cups. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, 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 that, that interaction Feels like when in season eight we met this another witch that wanted to get married with Paige. I don't know. I somehow I, I related because we can be able to see some other male witches in the show. And I remember that episode when I, I don't remember the episode of, of the guy, but the one who had that fight with, with, with Henry. Yeah, with the, Last Temptation of Christy. The Last Temptation the of Last Temptation of Christy. Simon Marks. Yeah. I feel like they were like kind of similar situation. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
soothsayers and everybody can, you know, tell me that we're best destined, Paige. I'm Simon Marks. We la la la. Um, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Timothy shows him his power to levitate coffee cups, and then Timothy was coming on strong, but Paige confided to him. Yeah. So Paige is like telling him all this stuff. Like she's trying to be a guard. She's like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be trustworthy. But okay, I'll tell you this. Okay, okay I'll tell you this. I really want to. I just met you a few minutes ago, and I can tell you all my darkest secrets. Yeah, it's my dark secrets. Um, and then Paige gives him her number on a napkin, and at first, nobody from the nineties. She's like. Hey, yeah, yeah, he has my number and napkin, but at first he doesn't like touch it, he just like sits there. <laughs> and then she puts it down, and he's like, Okay, now I'll grab it. And then she sees it like damp and like, ew, why, why is this napkin getting wet? But <laughs> uh sure. And she's like, Okay, maybe he just touched his drink and stuff. And then Daryl he arrives at the station and he's immediately called into a meeting. So there's a task force now gonna work on the case. So this is where he meets his other cop buddies and like there's this lady Lorraine, who's in charge, and she's like, we need to get more information on this killer. We need to catch this killer. Yeah, um, and that was the, the, the interesting about that is that, that we know that they, they have more other people who can relate beside of the of the charm ones, and it's, it's it, it will be nice to see that on the show. I wonder if other uh, mm-hmm. cop will be able to help the girls, or I don't know, but it, it could be a, a very interesting thing to, to watch back then on the show. Yeah, right. So, and then Daryl realizes that he, since he knows these murders, he's kind of an asset to the case. So that's good. Yeah, so we got them on the case. <laughs> Chapter five. Chapter five. Phoebe is in her room, happy to be avoiding uh, Piper and Paige. And then Leo orbs and tells that uh, he talked with Aunt Agnes because Phoebe asked him for, for that. <laughs> and it was... It was fun because well, the first thing is that we know that this woman is very like aggressive because <laughs> Leo uh, says that he punches or something. I don't I don't remember as well, but um, it is still uh, a curious to the show where somehow uh, Pipe, uh, Phoebe and, and, and Leo has this kind of um, I don't know. Uh, this relationship, like friends, like when the time where where uh, Phoebe tells Leo that he couldn't kill Cole, and th- like a partnership. I don't know how how can I explain it. I don't know if you yeah, know what I mean. right. It's just you know they have they have uh, a love for each other and they work together and they help each other. And then uh, Piper arrives after uh, the Petri shift. And Paige makes an appearance it, uh, in her PJs. And then Phoebe sends that Paige has a secret that it's exciting to her. And um, then we have uh, Rosa Porfirio, another Latin um, reference yes. in, the, in the show. Uh, she takes a bus to her home and she's excited because she's going to see what her husband painting, what... And and uh, and she ha- she also has a children, right? A nine or nine year old nine year old kid, yeah. Yeah, that was sad because uh, we met these randomly girls and they ended up dead, and she, it, it was kind of sad because they they yeah. were like innocent with family and stuff, and and it was very sad that the charm was going to save them. Yeah, they, every every other chapter is so it ends it starts with this new lady. They introduce you to this lady and they give you their whole life story and they tell they give you like the perspective of the people that they're talking about. So you learn about everything about them and you hear what they're thinking and stuff. So when the murders happen, when they inevitably die, it is you feel it a lot harder. I think. So yeah, uh, she's walking to the fog like she was following the yellow big road to the fog, <laughs> and <laughs> spoiler alert, she gets. Stabbed by the this strange uh, creature because we at this point we didn't know as well what it is so it's it's only it's 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 just, um it's someone it's something we it's it's like part of the mystery at this point of the of the of the story and it's so weird that the killer like talks to them like she starts to scream and then he covers her mouth he's like I like the quiet don't you? I'm like. <laughs> Oh, chills! Oh, like don't say things to me. Yeah, that, that, like that. that would be disturbing if that happened in real life. Oh. 
<laughs> okay, and, and, and then, um, well, she kills the, uh, this, this woman, Rosa Porfirio, and moments after that, when all the, the police uh, department is on the, the crime scene, then uh, Dario arrives, and it's in this point, I feel like we, we were reading some mystery book about who the murder is because yeah. uh, they are uh, making reference to other cases that they have and how these people act when when they have to investigate some serial killer or something. It was like a very Sherlock Holmes style or, or <laughs> something like that. Right, right. So yeah, and so Daryl arrives on the scene, and that's the end of that chapter. Yeah, just to, a point of that, they they say that the FBI was after the the girls. Uh, so what happens is, yeah, pretty much right now the task force is in charge, and they have they have a certain amount of time that they have to like solve this case or like have any kind of progress it, on the case because if if they keep failing, then it goes to FBI. So they want to get the solved before mm-hmm. FBI takes over because Daryl is like personally invested in this case. He wants to see it to the end he wants to see it through to the end and he wants to catch the guy he's because he knows if it goes to fbi then he'll never even know what happened and he'll never he'll be in the dark and he doesn't want that chapter six piper arrives in in, in the breakfast uh, scenario and she feels this tension between phoebe and, and Paige. Paige is trying to be supportive and then uh, timothy calls Paige at work and they t- they bond over being witches who help people and P- Timothy say that his ancestor Ramona used to work with another witch named Agnes Halliwell and I think it is going to be a spoiler alert but I feel that they were something wrong with this Timothy guy when she started to know so much more of the Halliwell ancestors than even Paige and I was like very suspicious but oh my gosh the moment. It's very, very red flaggy, yeah. And, and then uh, he asked Paige if he's ever read about the charm ones, and uh, Paige admits that she's a charm one, and Timothy tells that Phoebe has a letter in her room that she needs <laughs> to read. So I was thinking, is this guy has premonitions or knows the future? Because there is no other explanation, I'm like, explanation for that. Yeah. You know way too much for someone I just met. Like this is yeah. not. I'm like I'm just like uh uh uh. I'm I like mean, calling it off right there. Which, yeah, because if you one day meet somebody that she knows more of your life that, that you even know, it's like weird and and, and disturbing. And at this point, is mm-hmm. Timothy guy. Uh, I was thinking uh, he knows a lot of of Paige ancestors and and it doesn't sound so. So good. Paige asks that how does he know these kinds of information and then he says that's one of my powers but we don't even He's very vague. He's like you have your powers I have mine. Just accept that it's one of my powers. Like yeah, that's, no, that's I need no. more than that. <laughs> I'm like that's not going to fly buddy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then we have this uh, part when Phoebe goes to this uh, interview for our work in a library. The interview goes wrong. And she saw a waitress woman. In, uh, she has a premonition. Then she has a, the, the, the premonition, right? About yeah. the next uh, woman that's going to be victim. Other, the, the next victim. Yes. That was supposed to be my chapter, but you went with it, so I'm just like, sure, that, that works. <laughs> <laughs> so chapter seven, um, Paige Orbs home, and she sneaks into Phoebe's room. So Phoebe's at her interview, um, and, no, and Piper is out with Leo, so she's like, nobody's home. I'm going to sneak in there. And she goes, and she finds the Agnes letter and she reads the Agnes letter. She's like, oh my gosh, this is why Phoebe was so rude to me. And then it's cuts to Lorraine Yi, who is, um, she was head of Daryl's task force. Um, and they're talking again and she has a meeting with everybody and she assigns everyone to figure out the victims day to day lives. She's like find everything you can about these victims. What's the connection? We need to find the common thread. Um, and then another woman has been found. So now, then Phoebe's at her interview and she has, she's at, interviewing at a book chain. So this is like a, like a Borders or a Barnes and Noble, um, and she has to do some like book stuff. But she realizes that real quick during the interview that it wouldn't work out, and then she realizes that her subconscious still trusts both of her sisters. So even though she's having this 
at odds with them both, she still trusts them at their core. So, uh, chapter eight. Yes. Okay. Then Leo orbs to Piper at P3. She found out that the series of murders occurred, and the family pretty much narrowed it down to one suspect. And we talk up again about the Agnes. Uh, that she wanted to protect, that she she believed that that this guy uh, from the past was his his brother, and he was uh, trying to protect them. Yeah, so pretty much they're saying like, yeah, he he talked to Agnes or he talked to somebody, and he found out, you know, that yeah, Timothy was uh, pretending to be a witch that was Agnes's brother, and then um, Agnes was protecting him. She's like, yeah, my family hates you, but they're wrong. <laughs> and, 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 and it is funny because uh, Grams in one episode said that their family was only a line of women and thanks to these books we realized that they also were men in, in the Hollywood line and that's... Yeah. and then uh, she realized that uh, this guy he wasn't really his brother they have this uh, battle between each other that I think that was where uh, Agnes died that she destroyed the demon, but the demon also uh, attacks her, and that's why I guess provokes that and Agnes died because of the injuries that the demon makes her. Back to Paige again. Timothy is full advice for for Paige, and he seems to know uh, a lot of things that Paige doesn't know. That it's <laughs> even more uh, weird, and then he su suggests that. She needs to find more things that Agnes left around. We go to Daryl again, and he's where the last victim was found. And he realized that he has to keep things more quickly because the the, the murders are occurring even faster than that way that that he thinks. Yeah, the murders are more frequent, and they're happening during the daytime now, not just at night. So they're like, okay, things are really escalating here. Cole looked at the Gates apartment. So yeah, so this is um, where Piper and Leo were earlier at the crime scene of where these 100-year-old skeletons were found. So Cole's doing the investigations now. He went to the apartments and then he went to the city hall to acquire ownership slash tenant records about these places. You know, typical lawyer stuff because that's what Cole does. The clerk tells Cole that the last tenant who lived in the basement apartment was Timothy McBride. Mm -hmm coincidence i think not. Um, but, <laughs> but he dis he disappeared in 1904 no one wanted to rent the apartment after that and then the other tenants slowly moved out so yeah timothy was living where the skeletons were found and then he disappeared uh, and then at 1906 is when the big earthquake came and that's what kind of destroyed a lot of stuff but uh, it, would, it, yeah. it would be nice to see something about the earthquake on on, on the actual show don't you think we do know that um the manor was destroyed in the 1906 earthquake because the San Francisco earthquake in 1906 is a real thing. It actually happened. Um, but in the show, that's when the manor was destroyed and rebuilt over the Nexus. Um, now Paige goes on the hunt for Agnes's things per Timothy's request. He's like, go look for stuff. And then she, she finds a trunk with her name inside. She's like, okay. And she ruffles through things and she became interested in this old hand mirror that looks just like the one from I've Got You Under My Skin. And as if on cue, Timothy calls Paige. Right after she finds the mirror, Timothy calls her. He's like a, like a supernatural stalker. Yes, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he calls Paige and he tells her, he's like, okay, you know what, Paige? You're in danger if you stay at that house now. I realize this because your sisters don't trust you. So you need to come meet me. Did you find a mirror button there? Bring that. Yeah, I, I want to try something. <laughs> Phoebe left her failed interview. Piper and Leo greet her by her by her car, I guess. If she doesn't have a car, but she greets her. They greet her. And then they all orb to Cole. And then with Cole, they go to like a little bar area and they reveal all their findings. Cole thinks Timothy is back. Um, and they decide to contact Paige, but she called in sick from work. So she is not there. So they have to find out where Paige is. And then they all return back to the manor and they find Agnes's Hallowell's open trunk. And then commercial break. <laughs> commercial, commercial break, yes. <laughs> then we are in chapter 10 where Phoebe and Piper wonder if maybe uh, their, their fight was a, because... They were they were under a spell or something, and it was it was, it was weird because I never felt like they they were like under a spell. I didn't feel like they were under a spell. I thought they were just like fighting, yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we're 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 mad at each other because 
You know, someone did this to us. I'm like, oh, all right. And, sure. and then <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the book where Leo orbs in with and Agnes. It was a really cool to read that actually and Agnes appeared in the present, not only in, in, in the flashbacks or, or in, in reference. Uh, Agnes agreed to help the, the girls because she heard Timothy may come back. She tell us that Timothy wasn't his true uh, half brother, and we realized at this point that he's the bad guy. I mean, when she discovered that he was evil, she saw his monster reflection on the mirror. When I re I was reading that part of the mirror, to say, "Oh, the mirror over here." It, it kind of reminds me this part w w where M M Melinda Warren's lucky. I I think this this woman seems to use enchanting things to to keep men inside because Agnes made exactly the same that that Melinda. Back to the story page, it's I guess he was like in the park or something, but there was a lot of fog over there. She hears that. Somewhere where uh, Timothy is, it's it's strange because he didn't want it to appear uh, physically. Just we know that he's hearing his his voice. It was so weird because yeah, this is right after we found out that Agnes tells him that she trapped him in the mirror, and then he's like, you know, I only trapped his physical form in the mirror. So there's another part that remains outside of it. So now we go to him, and he's like. Paige, come here. I'm in the woods. Come here. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, just, and she's like, why? So why? He's like, you come to me. He's like, no, come to me. No, come to me. <laughs> then Paige realized that she never actually had a physical contact with him. I mean, she had a flashback with the napkin that she never got the napkin directly from him. He just right. put it in the she table and she touched. And then Timothy asked Paige to put the mirror down and walk away. And then he will explain how they can be together but that at this point Paige was already concerned that Timothy's behavior wasn't okay and he was already in this point thinking that he could be dangerous but still she puts the mirror down and I was like yeah you already know that he's dangerous and you still put the mirror over there what's so, wrong with you yeah and Agnes said something similar she's like you know I I had to like focus on his monstrous face to in order to to bank to trap him because apparently he has some kind of like sw sway over them. So like when they see him, they like they fight their their normal reactions, their their distrust and everything is like subsided. So he has a way of like swaying them to his side even when they they know better, which is crazy. Chapter eleven. All right, I'll go. Yeah. So Agnes disappears. She's like, I told you everything I need to know. This is what I did. Um, and then Cole believes that Timothy gets his power from the bodies he killed. So the more people he kills, the more powerful he gets. And then the flooding had somehow awakened a part of him that was left, or whatever was left there. And it, the flooding of the apartment building. Uh, Leo starts to sense for Paige um, so they can find up, track her down and find out where she is. And then cuts the page back in the park and she watches as Timothy's water fog monster arm. <laughs> it's like he reaches out for the mirror. So he's like in the woods and then his like, arm like extends crazy monstery like the eat from the 90s when the werewolf appears and and, and, and puts the hand in, in the on her shoulder I... yeah Paige sees his weird uh arm grab the mirror and then she's like okay this was a mistake this guy is messed up and evil so Paige tries to orb the mirror back to her it was protected like you put like a force field on it so she couldn't orb so she's like, well, I can still grab it physically, so I'm going to go lunge for the mirror and grab it. So she goes to grab it, but then Leo orbs in and stops her and grabs her. And so Leo and the rest of the group are there. She's like, no, don't don't get the mirror, page. Like, it's not worth it. She's like, no, I have to stop him. <laughs> and then Piper tries to freeze him, but because he's just like foggy water. So he, he, she just freezes like water droplets for a little bit, a split second. And then he starts, they start to absorb more water. And he, yeah, he's like ever, he's ever moving. So it, it's never, you can't really stop him. So he couldn't really, he's like non-corporeal, so he can't really freeze forever. But then Timothy takes the mirror and he smashes it on a tree. Now he's in his physical form. So now he's whole again. And then Piper's like, oh, good. Now I can freeze you. But Timothy blocked your freeze again. He had like another like force field or something. And then he taunted them as he escaped. He's like, guess what? Sucks to be you. Not I'm free. <laughs> free. And then we go to chapter 12 when we met the 
last possible victim of Timothy. And this is the one from Phoebe's premonition. Yeah, this, the sisters try to take a, a man and then call, I uh, guess that Timothy was fog boy. Yeah, they call Timothy fog boy. He's like, oh, fog boy over here. Because in the beginning, we see that opening scene where the fog comes through. So he was always like part of the plans. He planted Phoebe's vision. and He could uh, get into the house in his non-physical form and... That's how Phoebe got his uh, strange dreams to oh. to make uh, against against Paige, and then we go back to yeah. Darryl, uh Lorraine in in their car, and she describes that she likes to get into the killer's mind to figure out how to catch them, and it was like uh, I, <laughs> I felt like the one was very uh, intelligent because the things that. It's yeah, good that she was saying it was like, oh, it, it, she has a point. It makes it makes sense what what she was saying to try to to catch the the serial killer. It's a very criminal minds kind of philosophy, but it's nice, you know. There was there was one thing in here, a typo in this book that made me laugh because Paige kind of talks to herself. <laughs> um, it says, "I'm so sorry, Paige." Paige said, <laughs> "Sorry for what?" Paige asked. I'm like, what? Like, that is so funny. It's supposed to be Phoebe talking to her page, but they had the typo in there, and it cracked me up. <laughs> uh, chapter 13. Here is the final encounter with the demons and the innocent and the charmed ones. Uh, because here they... So we have all of them going through the fog. Yeah, Teresa's going through the fog. Daryl and Lorraine are going through the fog. Charm sisters. So they're all kind of, like, convening in, like, it's the like, same It's area. like a convention, the, the fog convention or something <laughs> yes uh well here was timothy go where teresa is and i think in this point he, he the only thing that he wants to do is, is kill her and teresa falls back and calls him to trip on a trash can because at this point he's already in a physical form so they can yes i was having scream moments throughout this whole book but this is one part where like Okay, Timothy's running over to her. He conjured the dagger out of the fog. He's going to stab her. But she's like, no, I'm going to fight you. Trip on the trash can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from all the things that he Maybe did, laugh. Uh, he, he was with a, with a trash can. And it was was kind of funny. Paige appears and, and confronts Timothy with Teresa. And Teresa takes advantage of this distraction that Timothy has. and Yeah, she scratches his face. She's kind of scratches his face, but she's, she's still like being held by Timothy. So she's not away yet. And that's when Paige orbs him away from her and so that's why there is a separated and before Timothy calls up Teresa and she orbs away Piper goes into the scene and frees him and they lie out vanquishing stones and Teresa gets away um Paige comes up with the spell that they write it to to vanquish Timothy. And the end of the day, they destroy uh, Timothy. This should have vanquished Timothy for good, because at the end, you know, they go to P three to celebrate, and Daryl joins them. You know, you don't have to worry about this killer ever again. He's gone for good now. Because um, I guess before, when they uh, Agnes thought that she vanquished him, she only like trapped part of his. She trapped like his physical part in the mirror, and then there's still like an essence of him left. So she never got all of it, I guess. And so yeah, I guess now everything is dead. I think that he might be cool return in the future. I don't know, but that's why you have Chris's problems. <laughs> well, you never know, right? Totally. And that's the end. How do you feel about this book overall? you have any final thoughts? Mm, I, I like it. I mean, how, how I you tell you at the beginning of, of the podcast, this is the first book that I read of, of the show, and I really enjoy that. Even I think that this book has the same structure somehow that if while you was watching an episode on, on on TV, but I like it. I like it. I I really felt very um it was very interesting to know that there is a story of the of the Hollywood sisters here in in, in, in books, and I, I really enjoyed to read the books. I can, can't wait to have the, the complete collection of the other books too. See, so happy to spark that book love, that book curiosity. I'm, uh, <laughs> so yeah, this book, I really enjoyed this book too. It gave me some serious like scream vibes, very kind of like nineties horror slasher, uh, stalker vibes. I really liked it. It creeped me out, but I was also enthralled. Like this was thrilling to me. Um, and you said it before, the idea of introducing family members from their past is always something that will pique my curiosity. 
because you know that's something we haven't seen a lot of we don't know a lot about their their past heritage yeah i mean a few months ago i made a hollywood uh, tree at uh, the, the hollywood tree yeah i remember i helped you find some i, I took pictures of the magazine yeah for you. And, and i figured out that i mean i don't know if all of that information is official because there is no an official source of that it will be so much interesting to see a show about their uh, ancestors I, I remember that a few years ago, there was going to be a, a, another restart of the show, but back in the 70s, and I was like, oh, that would be interesting to see. I thought that the way the murder scenes were written were especially terrifying because they were written from the perspective of the, perspective of the victims, because yeah. that describes their thoughts and feelings. That was very scary to me. Um, I like that they talked about um, Paige's memory about visiting the mall in fifth grade with her parents oh, because we never yeah. got to see anything from her childhood before. So we only saw like her high school days. So anything before that was a mystery. So when she had that little flashback of her being in fifth grade, I'm like, this was cool. Uh, when I was reading that part, I I always think it would be nice to see if somehow in, in some part of his life, she already met their sisters. I don't know. I mean, San Francisco is a very... Right big city so like when piper meets leo in pro witch when when she was talking about a uh, pro about yeah. warrior what if somehow Paige already met somehow uh pro or piper or phoebe or even uh grams i don't know yeah. they don't even know who they who they are in that time and, and it will be that's interesting to think yeah there's actually a theory i, I there's a video on youtube with a theory that um they got really close to meeting in Wrestling with Demons because they did the Lost and Found spell. Oh, um, yeah, they, I know the, that theory. So there's a theory that Paige came to the manor curious, but they weren't home at the time, so they just missed each other. I remember that when I saw season four uh, in, in, in the first episode where Paige says that uh, for a year ago, she thinks that she was related to the Hollywood sisters and that stuff. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I didn't know how much was happening behind the cameras. I mean, uh, because when I was watching that episode, I was thinking, what if there is a, a, an episode in season three where Paige goes by and, and I didn't see it, but I guess that at some point, they met each other, but they didn't talk as well. So I think that Paige was always been uh, there, but they, they never put the connection together. The... Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to do put that in my canonical hat. Canonical. The main issue that I have with, with this uh, storyline was that Agnes knew that a sister will die and then another sister will appear. Through the show, Melinda Warren said that they will be three sisters that will be, become the charmed ones. So, and Agnes already knew that one of the sisters will die. Why nobody else uh, care about that? I mean, <laughs> um, I have quite a few. Um, in the book, Phoebe talked about how she met the ghost of Melinda Warren when she first found a book of shadows, which didn't happen in the show. So that's not but, canon in the show. But if you, but if you read the first book. It did happen in the very first book. So I mean, at least that's consistent with the first book. So I didn't mind it as much because of the book canon, but it did not happen in the show. They did, they mentioned the earthquake of 1906, which actually destroyed the manor, which was fun to note. Daryl, they say that Daryl is unmarried in this book, which that bothered me. <laughs> mm, well, but in season four, we didn't know much about Dar uh, Daryl's life until season five. We didn't meet Sheila yet in season four, but we do. We did know he was married. Um, if this was two thousand, what? Let's see, two thousand one, two thousand two. Two thousand one. Yeah. So this is the beginning of season four. If this was the beginning of season four, he would have been married, and he would have at least had one kid. He would have had Mikey Morris. That's his first son. Um, and so he should have at least had one child. His second son, Daryl Jr., was born around the end of season five, around Wyatt's time. So because I remember in season six, mm -hmm. Sheila says that Wyatt and uh, Daryl Jr. could have a play date. So those are his Daryl's two kids. He has two sons, but um, his second son wasn't born until they're around the end of season five, mid to end season five. So <laughs> we talked about Paige public transportation because she just should have her car. Oh, and this is another thing. When can Leo just go and communicate with the dead whenever he wants? Because they say that Leo went to go talk to Agnes. I don't think he could just go and talk to the dead anytime. <laughs> no, that was that was weird to 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 know because 
what if he didn't go uh, to to the heaven and talk Prue, for example? And right. I mean, I mean, they can talk with Agnes, but they can he can talk with with, with Prue. I mean, that, that is the sisters can communicate with the dead a lot easier than Leo can communicate with the dead. The sisters can just do the summon the dead spell. <laughs> But I don't know why they had to go get Leo to go talk to her ghost. And, and, uh, and this is part of the, I, I guess, some of the abilities that he has a, as a white lighter. But we don't, even in the show, there is yeah. very clear his abilities. I can see it maybe with like Clyde, the uh, guy from Page from the Past. She could, maybe maybe he had made a deal with him. The only, only way that would make sense is that yeah. he made a deal with him because that spirit. Oh, well, yeah. If Clyde was in the picture why they didn't call him to go to the past for example and, and I know, visit I know. Or, or something I know. I, I don't um, know. that's another thing too is because like he, I, they made it they made, insinuated that Leo orbed Agnes's ghost as well <laughs> so I'm like that's even weird to me <laughs> when he orbed Agnes to like the matter <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I don't like, know if that's possible n- never orbed yeah I mean Graham's only a why would you need to orb a ghost tiny, yeah. <laughs> Agnes Hallowell and Philippa Hallowell had their last name Hallowell, when really that shouldn't be pop- possible because Penny was the first person Hallowell. to be named Hallowell. Yeah. Because that came from her husband, Alan Hallowell. Her That's husband. where the name first came from. So anything before that would not have had a Hallowell name. Um, so that's something. Yeah, I mean, that it would be uh, maybe uh, Warren or. I don't. I don't know. The, the Jackson last name was already in the in the family. Yeah. I don't Johnson. Uh, Johnson. Uh, there's Russell. You can do Bowen. You can do Baxter. You can do. <laughs> I I yeah. have the theory that Agnes was related somehow to to the sisters from the twenties because there is no much difference in the time from from the time when the storyline happened to the to the twenties. So maybe there was uh, Anne or something of the of the girls in the twenties, I guess. Well, too, if you think about um, *Sense and Sensibility* in in season five, um, Piper blows up. They say that you blew up Aunt Pearl's couch, which Pearl, we know, yeah. was uh, Russell's first name. So I'm like, maybe that was related too. Um, we don't know much about who Aunt Pearl is, but they say Aunt Pearl, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm always thinking, speaking of other ancestors, it would be so cool if the sisters from the 20s uh, go to the future. I don't know. I would I will yeah. like to, to see another episode where the girls meet again, the, the cousins. Um, and then I thought it was funny too because Piper mentioned Matahari in this book. Like they compared Phoebe's fears over Paige to Matahari. Which was funny because that didn't happen yet, but later on, you know, Phoebe gets possessed by <laughs> Ghost of Matahari. Oh, so that's just a fun, <laughs> a fun, th- a fun thing to note there. <laughs> um, this book came out a year before that episode even aired, so that's pretty funny. Yeah. Okay, that's all I got for Canonical. Now we do our rhyme time. Should we try a spell? Why not? Let's try a spell. In the wind, I send this rhyme. Bring death before me, before my time. You've really got to lay off the rhyming group. Wonderful. Witty, but wordy. I did the rhyme. I will do the time. Good night. Rhyme time. The first spell is the spell that Phoebe used to kind of navigate the Book of Shadows and get more information on, on Agnes. So she kind of comes up with this. It's called To Find Agnes's Clue. Pages left and pages right bring Aunt Agnes's past into the light. Ta-da! I mean, it's fine. It works. It's something made up on the spot. It rhymes. I, I'm not offended by it. It works for me. <laughs> I like it's it. It's there. The another spell that I have the Spanish version and the English version, I'm going to tell you the okay. English version. It's the Vanquish Timothy McBride. It's a power tree spell. Please vanquishing stones around the target before the champ. Okay. The power of tree once put asunder, renews itself, and sends you down under. Mm-hmm. It, I guess it, it, it rhymes. Um... The Spanish version doesn't rhyme. Uh, is you wanna that I read the, the Spanish version of it? Sure. Okay, good. It's que el poder de tres que una vez hiciste pedazos se renueve y te consuma desde abajo. I like better the, <laughs> the English version of this. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't have a real rhyme to the Spanish one, huh? Mm, not much. I mean, it's 
It's weird because they they had the spell. Paige kind of said it by herself, even though it's a power of three spell. They said, Paige, you can do the honors. Yeah, <laughs> like, all right. This, this will be your first time. Do the honors. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, cool. Next, I have best baddie rankings. Best baddie. <laughs> We only had one villain in here. It was Timothy, but I thought he was a really good villain. I thought he was scary. He was terrifying. He did. He did give you um, an initial trust because you know, like a normal kind of cool guy. But um, I'm gonna rank him number. What did I put him? I think I ranked him number three on my list. Mm, I, I like it because I think he was very very clever to infiltrate the charm ones, but the one with the most vulnerable one. That in this case will be Paige, and I think that it was very clever for. For his yeah. to, to do that. And the fact that he kind of had like a watery, like fog, hydrokinetic kind of power. I really like water stuff. And so that was kind of neat to see and unique to see. And I enjoyed that too. So he's kind of a yeah. higher ranked villain for me. Now our 10 things segment. 10, 10, 10 to 10, 10, 10. Here's 10 things. Where I t- asked you to uh, come up with your five favorite Magical artifacts from the show, excluding like the obvious Book of Shadows the and Spirit Board. Book of Shadows so. and the Spirit Board. I'm going to five to, to one. To the yeah. latest, to the first, very first favorite. The five will be Melinda's Warren uh, Locket. I like it okay. a lot. The it's Pure Heart. Good. Yeah. So my five is the light of eternal love. Do you remember what, what that is? Yeah, the one that the elders give to Piper and Leo. And they yeah, it's the lamp. I... Yeah, Piper always didn't like that lamp, but I thought it was so beautiful. <laughs> I'm like, it, yeah, it right. had a cool crystals, it, gl- it had a nice glow to it. It was super cool to me, and I want it in my house. <laughs> Great as an ornament or something. Yes, I love it. All right, what's your number four? Uh, my number four will be uh, the Scrying Crystal. Okay. I, I, I like the Scrying Crystal a lot. Uh, I do have a few Scrying Crystals on my collection, but I, I like when they appear in the opening credits in the map and also in the front cover of the Season 8, I think, that is a Scrying Crystal on the back. Yeah. I, I like it a lot. Scrying in the show is actually different from Scrying in actual magic. Scrying in actual magic is more with mirrors. My number four is the Crystal Cage. I love oh, those pyrite the, crystals. I, I, I like it but when they trying to kill the source in the series vision that they trap it into a cage. Yes. They introduced in season three with, with Prue. So I didn't see it as when it was first introduced. Prue came up with it. And they used it consistently through the entire rest of the series to keep things in, keep things out, keep things protected. Um, it's just a really cool thing. And they and they make that, that noise, that, oh, that little ping to know that it's like a little magical alarm system they're super cool to it will be very <laughs> useful in real in real life about those crystals my number three i think it will be nails painting okay the cursed painting yeah because i also made my own uh, version of the nails painting and it was very great to know that there's actually a castle that exists there is not yeah. just a random picture that that somebody I just uh, painting over there. There's the castle in England. Yeah, I tried to see some reference when I, when I was making the my, my my own replica. I have two spots for number three. One is the the, the nails painting. Another one, I don't know if that counts as uh, magical stuff as well. But I love the Melinda Warren uh, draw, the drawing of Melinda Warren. I also made my own replica and it was very fun to do. That, that counts, sure, why not? <laughs> Warren which is Antiques, for sale. Uh, my number three is the Buddha Staff from oh, season okay. eight. Go Van I really think it's a beautiful, kind because of, it's all about balance and it's about the Chinese Zodiac. And I always, always like Zodiacs and I like the, their kind of philosophy in there. and. You know, it can be pass. It can project people's feelings onto another. Per- it's it's a kind of a cool little thing, and it's beautiful. The detail on it is beautiful. So it's w- definitely one of my top favorite artifacts. My number two will be uh, the hollow. The hollow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, another it, it, another uh, staple in the series. Yeah. Yeah, it only appears in three episodes of the of the show, but I I think that that uh, it has a very cool background story. I mean, it will be great to know what the uh, source that we met in season four fights with uh, another kinds of demons and they leo 
talk something about a, a battle when the house almost destroys mm -hmm. everything and, and, and i think it's it's a, a really nice thing inside of the, of the universe of the of the show it would have been cool to see that hollow history and the whole like what kind of horrors and what kind of battle took place eons ago when they decided to contain it like yeah, what was the fight over the hollow about how was created or who created the, yeah. the hollow? it would be interesting to to know about that but sure. we will never know that that <laughs> answer <laughs> my number two is tuatha's wand another beautiful piece to me mm -hmm. um uh, season, I, two. I, I, season two yeah uh that old black magic but uh that's season two episode six <laughs> and uh i don't know it has a beautiful handle it's all of little snakes surrounding the golden crystal it's i don't know it's just beautiful i still want that in part of my collection i don't have it yet but and, and it's very elegant i don't know like like a like a throne or something it looks very yeah elegant right my number one i was thinking a lot if putting this in number one or two but the thing is that one of my favorite things inside the universe of the show i will choose the picture of the girl that appears in the first episode the, I don't know, the symbol of his strength it is. I, I, I love that picture when they pull it together. Yeah. And I have my own, I have a frame where I, I put my, my uh, picture of the girls. I think that was one of the most symbolic symbolic things of the, of the show in the very first years. Uh, it was such a shame that we couldn't see him anymore after... Uh, Bruce that but it's an iconic piece it's a very beautiful piece it's something that will always be a staple and uh, i it's, i wish they would have been able to include it in the end it's something that and i didn't even think about that as being magical but you're right it, it's definitely a great number one i love that my number one is the sin box <laughs> oh yeah and, and you also have it right the sin box you, you already have the the sin box i do have and it's I always loved that episode. I was always drawn to that episode and I thought the scene box was so cool to me. You know what's funny? I realized most of my stuff has has a glow element to it. I like the magical glow. <laughs> Little balls in there and then they you, when they get thrown, they have the aura, the color aura. Um I don't know. They're really it's just a beautiful piece to me. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of that, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good number one choice for, for a magical thing for but yeah, I I, I like it. Yeah, I saw the picture that you post uh, a few weeks ago of, of your scene box. And it's, it's really nice. It's very accurate to the one to, to the appearance of the of the of the show. It is. I'm very happy with it. It took a, it was something I coveted for a long time. Really wanted for a long time, um, and I'm glad that I have something that's that works now. From all the things that you have, which is more important to you? I mean, there's so many great pieces and so many iconic things. I mean, most people would save the Book of Shadows, but I think. For me right now, my favorite thing is probably mostly because of the rarity of it, because I think I'm one of the few people that actually have one, my P3 neon sign. Okay. Um, I see it over there. Yeah, it's not lit up right now, but it's hard to come by, and, and I'm very lucky to have it. Yeah, I, it's the one that the Prescott Manor used to have, right? The, the yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. All we have left to do is our tip for future white letters. I was out being a force of good in the universe. So this is the moral of the story. What did we learn today? Don't believe that because something or someone is telling you something is going to be true. I think that in, 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 in this case, in the history, that Phoebe thinks that Paige could be a threat for them just because she finds a random letter on the attic and she <laughs> believes that it's true. And I think that we need to make sure when, when we listen to something that it's actually the truth. It's not because something that somebody says to you or or, or i don't know it's, it yeah. has to be right i think that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very important for for life yeah mine is very similar my lesson is communication is everything like if you have a problem with someone tell them what your problem is and give them the opportunity to make things right you know in any dispute talking about where you're coming from and what you're feeling and being willing to respect someone's feelings is like key to understanding and compromise so you know at least at the very least, you get closure on the turn of events so you know how to proceed and you, you the communication gives you a clearer path on what your relationship is like, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, everyone has a very different perspective to see things and everyone is a universe inside of his head. So we have to try to be more empathic with, with other person, in this case, with, with communication. Yeah, so, all right. So we have reached the end. Uh, where can the people so, find you? The, the most common uh, part where they can find me is on the Instagram. I already have uh, two accounts. It's the one that I post of my day by day. It's Calmi Heras. 
And the other one is where I put a lot of my charm creations, that is uh, Warren Witches and Ticks. I put all of my charm artworks there. The, the, uh, sometimes I sell the, the slip covers or, or replicas of, of the show. It's very fun to, to do that. But yeah, you can find me uh, as Calmijeras or uh, the Warren Witches and Ticks. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for all oh, you've done you. for the podcast. and. It was so much fun to do this. I'm glad. Yes. Uh, and then you can find this podcast on pretty much everywhere now. Uh, you, we're on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook at Words of the Witches. Or we have our new Twitter handle, uh, Words of Witches. Um, and then you can email us at wordsofwitchespod at gmail.com. And if you really can't get enough more, go follow my other podcasts for me and Charmed and Sean and other stuff at Hanging with the Hollywells. So that's exciting there. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks for a Halloween episode. Your destiny still awaits.